What is good? Not that slurp. That's for sure not what's good. We're back. Got a little tripod action for you tonight. Got uh, old Big Co over there, and the and he's got a full screen. Me and Jay Wayne are splitting the screen. How you doing over there, full screen? <laughs> I know. I thought something was different. I thought something didn't feel quite right. And Jay Wayne, that wasn't your best slurp. Everyone, don't do it again, Jesus. Mm, not good. Not good. That slurp can't do any better. Jay Wayne's obviously here. Ask He's my wife like, how good the slurp is. You know what I'm saying? It's, well, it's, <laughs> better be decent because it's not the looks. The slurp better be good. Whatever. Wasn't that hairdo? Wasn't those looks? Wasn't the physique? Whatever. That fucking <laughs> dropping lbs, baby. Let's go. If I wasn't married, I'm guy guy away. wears slack on every show now just to slim down. Keeps shoots at a proper angle. He's trying to rip. You lose the weight on purpose? Are you dieting? Uh, it's, uh, you, I'm, I'm dying. No, I'm are you? Uh, that's not you, funny. I know. It's are you funny. exercising? I've actually lost the most amount of weight ever in my life without without doing a bunch of exercise. I've started eating better. He so basically he's telling you that he was a trash monster. <laughs> I'm like I'm like I'm I'm like skinny fat now. I'm like still hey. fat, but I'm just like a smaller fat. There you go. Hey, Speaking of which, fat. before we get rolling today, we're doing a, a startup mock. Dynasty tight end premium non super flex, um, but so I was at home the other day making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. My dad's there. My me and my dad worked together. Got the got the uh, jelly out. Got the peanut butter out. I've never kept track of which one I put on the bread first. <laughs> so he's like, "Gotta go peanut butter." He's like, "What are you doing?" And I was like, "What do you mean? What am I doing?" He's like, "Who puts jelly on there first? Yeah, and I was I'm like, "I've never, that. I've it's whatever one was the closest to my hand. I, <laughs> I just opened it up and put it on." He's, I was like, "Why you got to put the peanut butter on first? Oh, because well, you can wipe the the knife off." I'm like, "You can wipe the fucking jelly off the knife too with the bread. Like this the makes peanut butter no, more substantial. This makes no difference. The peanut butter is more substantial. You don't have to worry about it disproportionately spreading after you're putting the jelly on. It. Whereas if you okay, try so to put this thick was just peanut butter on top." Wipe. Yeah, I'm not putting peanut. Wait, you put peanut butter and jelly on the same slice of bread? I guess I, I thought that's where I, you were been, going. I was going to say, a, you know, you can just jelly one side and peanut butter. Well, that's one what side that's what Jay Wayne sounded like. He was like saying sandwich. Yeah. So your what dad was just talking about. He was just saying which one first, which one yeah. first. And he was like, I've never put jelly on my peanut butter and jelly first. And I was like, I didn't know that there was method to the madness here. I just hope oh, whichever one I probably got out of the said cabinet or fridge and was closer mm -hmm. to me. That's what I went with first. I don't think I'm I made a peanut I would, butter and jelly sandwich in 25 years. I'm thinking I would, I would <laughs> five years old, not care either. And just wipe the knife off. Just like you're saying. Yeah. But so, if, yeah. if Jay Wayne needs to understand that you can just use both of those, both of <laughs> those pieces put, of bread, two slices of bread, peanut butter over here. <laughs> I'm only making it over here. Half in a fold. It's okay. Right. Nobody cares. You don't make your, peanut you don't make your here. daughter peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. What kind of man are you? She she likes the peanut butter sandwich with the banana. Teach her. Teach her. Hide the jelly in there, Bo. She'll appreciate it later. Yeah, for sure. Who wants to just Fucking be slurping on some peanut butter bread? Yeah, and just dry ass it? mouth. She loves it. <laughs> she loves it. <laughs> he probably, boys probably just never even exposed her to jelly. Just over there, just hiding, just keeping jelly from her. <laughs> Jelly's dessert. <laughs> Concord. Concord grape jelly, 100%. Welch's. Yep. All right. Zero, zero people care. Let's, let's. Oh, I think somebody I think there's somebody out there who's outraged about how you build a peanut butter and jelly sandwich because I didn't know. And my comments. dad was like, what are you doing? Leave it Why in the comments. Tell us the best way to do it. But if you didn't know the best, great, you have to go Concord grape jelly because it's the only 100 percent true grape jelly. Boom. OK, well, Jake, um, I mean, Casey's on Casey's on Welch's. What are you going with? He just Concord. Said. Concord. Oh, 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 oh. Well, Welch's Concord grape jelly. Is it is it the is it the subsidiary type type thing? Uh, I don't know. And I, I mean, wonder how we lose subscribers. Whatever it is, it's Concord Grape. That's what I'm. That's what I'm going. There with. you go. Okay, as long as we're both on the Concord train. Yeah, and yeah, uh, oh, creamy peanut butter, creamy peanut butter. <laughs> Please don't unsubscribe. Usually we ask for people to subscribe. No, don't I think this is this was a valid question. Jay Wayne changes it up and says, valid question. "Don't leave us." Please don't tune out. Just get bored. They, Fifteen. They seconds tuned out because time. of the slurp, not because of the inquisitive. Oh. True. True. How are you slurp. building a peanut butter jelly? All right. Okay. So what again, are we doing? Mock draft, dynasty startup, tight end premium, non super flex. 
Uh, we do a bunch of these with the patrons. Uh, we selected this one just because it was the one that we selected a while ago, and we've done a bunch oh, since then. We selected this one because Big Co drafted a bad team. <laughs> well, that's what we did. Now. We were like, which Big Co team is the worst? Let's get this one. That's not at all what happened. It was like, that's we're going to use this one for the, the mock draft. And the then worst we did like three super flex mocks after this. And two worst, worst team I put together in two months, eight <laughs> mock drafts. Hardly matters who you actually picked. It's about the discussion. It's, it's the, okay. it's the, it's the, uh, it's the exercise. Right. So this one starts off as per usual and, and we're doing mocks. And again, it does hardly matters who you pick here. And again, that goes in, in real when you're doing the mock, like you don't necessarily have to take who you would take. It's an okay practice to not take who you would take and see where they end up going, how far they fall. And then building your team in different ways is feel how do you really do feel a certain type of way. Do you want to build wide receiver, heavy value, heavy running back, heavy, like this makes you kind of figure out how you actually feel comfortable inside building a team. And at the end of the day, like, that's what's going to make you the most happy. Um, and yeah, you're still trying to make money at the end of the day for most people, especially us, because we like to play in those $150 to $300, $500 leagues. So, you know, this is what we're going to go through, try to tell you who we think is the best value, when and why and how. Uh, and that's what we're going to do here. So you guys ready? Love it. All right. So one, one overall for everybody who's just listening via podcast, you should be watching on YouTube, but I'm going to try to say as many names and then and the uh, count as we go here. Christian McCaffrey won one, Dalvin Cook won two, uh, JT, Jonathan Taylor uh, won three, Saquon Barkley won four, Alvin Kamara won five. Now you can dice that up really any way you want to dice it up, but that's the top five that I'm pretty much always taking. I think we're all fairly much in agreement with uh, non superflex. That's the top five. I think normally that's how it's going to shake down. Not in that order, but yes, those are the top five. Right. Um, so then we get to one six, and this is where I think that, you know, I, I really want a running back here. Is this a trade back situation? Since, you know, I don't necessarily like Cam Akers goes here. Um, and any really of these remaining running backs, I'm not 100%. I don't feel great about taking them at 1-6. I don't feel the need to take them at 1-6, especially the ones that I like more. I'm not taking Cam Akers at 1-6. And some of these other sophomore running backs and or Nick Chubb and or uh, Najee Harris, I might I like better than him. Um, but you know, he's kind of going up in that range consistently. And I would prefer to probably just trade back and get what I can. Is everybody else feeling that, that type of way? It feels like one six to me is like, if I'm in that spot, that's where I want to try to, uh, move off of and, and get other, other things and move back and still get probably a guy that I, that I would actually want. Yeah. Well, let me jump in here real quick before you do big co one six, like I'm all for taking the value pick. Like who's the best value, but I don't know who the best value is here at one six. Like I definitely like JM JMW usually crushes these mocks. Um, and he's a, he's a thorn in our side, taking good players all the time, but I got to completely disagree with this cam Akers pick. I don't like that pick there. I've been taking DK Metcalf a lot just because I like DK Metcalf and it feels like that's the best value. And if you want to argue AJ Brown or Justin Jefferson, I'm not going to really debate you too much on it. My preference is DK, but man, I just don't know that just nobody feels right at one six to me. Yeah. Would you feel that way? Biko? Well, yeah. So do, so do you, do you say fuck it and, and take those guys that you have faith in, or you try to make a deal? Are you, are you okay with taking the DKs, the Jeffersons, the AJ Browns, the Tyreeks, maybe a different running back. Maybe it's acres. Maybe it's um, Najee. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't think you're certainly not fucking it up by taking DK, AJ Jefferson. If you feel so inclined, maybe Tyreek, you know, I don't think you're messing it up by doing that. Um, but it gets super dry with running backs here. So like, I'm going to be trying to move back and still get a running back that I like. What do you, what do you think big co? Um, well, so, uh, did you, I, I had a monster yawn when you were going through your, who'd you say after Najee or is not when you were, originally going through it Casey when you said Najee and either it was him or you said somebody after that that you really liked but you couldn't take them up that high basically like I said any of like the sophomore running backs including Cam Akers it's not that I dislike Cam Akers I just don't feel confident taking really any of those guys up that high and all the rest of them I know I don't really have to take up that high because I've done a mock draft and I've mocked it before I fucked it a million times here and I've yeah. looked at ADPs and I know that if I just move further back down the line here, whether it be the end of the first or even the top of the second, I can get guys that I like a little bit more. And, you know, I don't think you're fucking it up by taking DK or AJ Brown here by any well, means, but 
think there's so, probably some value to be had in a trade back and like what would be acceptable if you feel that this is a trade back spot. Well, before I touch on the trade, Jay Wayne's been hammering the DK Metcalf to see how his team builds go. Why is it okay for, why do you make that decision to take DK over a running back there, Jay Wayne? Well, because of the value, you know, these sophomore running backs don't, you know, except for acres, which I'm on, I'm not on board with taking acres in the first round of a startup, you know, it's, it's, it's Chubb. Sometimes it's Derrick Henry. I just, I feel like DK Metcalf is a better dynasty value than those running backs. I absolutely could take a, a running back instead of DK Metcalf. I could take Clyde. I could take Najee Harris. I mean, there's an argument to be made for Zeke. Like I, I and, and as my team shakes out, you know, we'll get to it, but I, I kind of feel like I probably shouldn't have taken DK Metcalf, even though I feel like that was the right pick. I feel like a running back is what you really need in that spot. So, but I just, you know, DK Metcalf is the next to Leo Jones, in my opinion, he's, he's super young and he's been absolutely dominant at times. I feel like we haven't even seen his ceiling and I don't think you're messing it up taking DK Metcalf. And that would be my preference is the first wide receiver off the board. But it doesn't feel great. I feel like if I could move back, I absolutely would want to that's, move back, gain some equity, and then get that running back that I really want. That's what I was going to say. It's a mock. You can't trade back. So sure, sure. Or well, you could you could just show your cards and take who you who you really want there. But like for me, a guy like me, I know I'm uncertain in that spot. I'm going to just take somebody else and see where the rest of the guys who I might actually want kind of slot out. I mean, the interesting conversation from Jay there. Um, I completely I, I agree. If you take a DK Metcalf, you take an AJ Brown or a Justin Jefferson, their um, stats that we've already seen him put up at an early age in the NFL and their uh, stickability, if you will, uh, you're not messing it up. They're not you're, going anywhere either. They ain't going anywhere for a after. long time. And I didn't mention Tyree Kill just because he's four or five years, you know, four years older than those three guys. Yeah. Um, you're 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 getting a 22, 23 year old super stud wide receiver. Um, maybe like DK Metcalf. I completely agree, Jay, with the you know the potential for being the next Julio Jones. Justin Jefferson looks like he could easily catch a hundred balls a year. AJ Brown. If he would, if he got the targets, he could obviously catch them. And when he does catch them, nobody's tackling his, you know, big old self. Um, the, you know, so that you're weighing those wide receivers there, that youth at wide receiver, or the the cheetah with Patrick Mahomes throwing him the ball, versus, in my opinion, a uh, you know the best running back Nick Chubb um, doesn't get the passes. Uh, Najee Harris, who knows how many passes he's actually going to catch, but, you know, we've already seen him making these, oh, a ton. Uh, you know, ridiculous one-handed Odell Beckham looking plays in practice, having a good time out there. The thing about the maker's pick, it doesn't feel good right this second for sure. Cause you're the thing about that at the one six, like, yeah, you, if you take Metcalf there, you're not, you've seen enough. You don't have to project anything. You could, you can project more ceiling, but you've already seen him be physically dominant on the field and nobody on a defensive side of the ball that's going to be, that, that can run with him, can't tackle him. Aaron Donald can tackle him, but he can't run with him, you know? So there was literally nobody on the defensive side of the ball that can play with DK Metcalf outside of Jalen Ramsey, um, who actually happens to play him two times a year, but the cam Akers, if he explodes in that Rams offense, he's not the talent that Gurley was, but Gurley never had Matt Stafford making the defense back up either. Um, and you would assume that McVay gets better at this a little bit at a time every year because he should be, you know, every every good, every good by some, you know, every quality individual of their profession gets better at it. And that's all we're trying to do with this fantasy football game as well. The trade back scenario. You got I think it. it's an to me personally. I think it's an automatic trade back at the one six. The problem is, there's probably, not probably. There's definitely a handful of people behind you to think the exact same thing. Oh, I really like this guy. See, like I'm going to beg to differ. I'm going to beg to differ there. Somebody well, really second. wants one of these wide receivers. I think. Give me a second. They might, or they might have been Akers. in the, or they might have been in the first three picks already. I really, really want DK, but I'm obviously taking Dalvin Cook. There might be somebody behind you that wants to pay enough to come up and make you happy with your trade back value. The other scenario is you get off your high horse and you're like, all right, I got to trade back. 
you might have to trade back farther than you want and not get paid as much as you want. But if you do get value, you're still, I mean, you could get, you could take anybody in the second round. They're still awesome at football. That's why they're in the second round. Right. So I've been in this one, six, one, seven, one, eight spot trying to trade back before recently did the podcast in the rookie draft where I was at a spot in the rookie draft, trying to trade back and had to take much less than I wanted to get to trade back farther than I wanted to trade back. But it was, a piece of value added to what I ended up drafting. So the point is at one six, you might really get, you might be spinning your wheels with the one seven, one eight, one nine guy, but yeah, you might have the one ten guy might be like, I want AJ Brown so bad, or I want DK Metcalf so bad. I'll give you something really solid. What is something really solid? If you're really torn, if you're like, I could take AJ Brown, Justin Jefferson, DK Metcalf, I could be super excited if I got, you know, let's just sit, let's go go on with this mock draft here. Cam Makers off the board. Are you? Or, no, or, we're at one six. So he's okay, still we're, we're at. I was sorry. I looked at Jay Wayne's DK Metcalf at one seven. So you're like, I got all these guys. I'm super happy with. Obviously, you start going. You know, the one seven guy's probably not going to pay you too much because he doesn't. He's right there. He's like, if you take DK Metcalf, I'll take Justin Jefferson or AJ Brown. I'm fine. You go to the one ten, one eleven guy. And he's like, easily these three wide receivers that he really wants could be gone before he gets up. He may be willing to pay you something good. In that, in this situation, to move back to just two or three or four picks, I mean, to me, if you could take a, a mid-third round startup pick and swap it for a mid-second round startup pick, I think that's solid. Um, Love that. Yeah, that's what that, I that, I think that would be my thing. It's like I'm trying you, to increase some of these three and fours if I can or twos if I can to, to – try to you know swap picks and get so that's a priority over next year rookie picks then well for me that's where i was going to go with this if you can get something um if you can go from a mid three to obviously if you're trading with the guy at 110 then you know he's got 310 so it's you know it gets kind of funky you really get into the draft pick minutiae there but if you can't get something that you feel very like if you can't get your three up to a two or say a five up to a three, that's you really want to jump into it to jump that line of where I really am, feel good about drafting the player here. You know, if you can take a six round startup pick where you're like, oh, most of the good guys will be gone by now and get that up into an early four, then there's definitely good players in the early four, no matter what. Um, but given let's if you can't work with that scenario too much and somebody just said, Hey, I want to work with my future picks. If you're, if you're at the one six and you get a first round pick next year to fall, you know, back to the two one or the two four or something like that. I think that's a ton. Now, if you'd pass up on DK Metcalf and he goes and catches, you know, uh, 90 passes for 1800 yards and 17 touchdowns, you probably wish you would have had him assuming that you still have your first round pick next year. You get somebody else's first round pick next year, and now you start to build on that collateral that you have in future draft picks to make more moves. You know, it's just it can get deep. But if I'm moving back off the one six, I'm either looking for I'm take I'll, I'll move back far enough to make it worthwhile. You do have the you know yeah I'd like to move back a couple picks at a time and get as much as possible. But people are I would rather move back one time and get a first round pick back. 15 picks if I had to to get a first round pick but still be able to get a, a stud then move back four picks for a third rounder next year yeah and then I mean, move back move back four picks for a second rounder you know I would I would rather get some that high because you don't know how many opportunities in the draft you'll have to pick up a future first so I would rather get the future first as soon as possible because you stay in that tier of stud guys to do it you got paid a first round pick to go from DK Metcalf to potentially, you know, you know, Clyde Edwards, um, you know. Yeah, baby, who, that's what who I, knows who you're who you end up with. Music yeah. to my ears, right there. If I can keep it under, if I can keep it under, uh, under like a Two round, yeah. if I can keep it under a round of move back for the first, I, you know, I'm I'm into that. Um, or, or you, like you said, you said 15, so it's not too far off of that, and I'm. I'm okay with that. But like, I'm just you know, saying that, like you said, you get, you get one first and then you can get another first. And then once you have another first and you can still, you moved back to get one of those first and you can still get a good, one of those good sophomore running backs. Like you're talking about uh, the Gibsons, the, the Clyde Edwards, the Swift, the Dobbins, the, maybe the Zeke, uh, any of those guys, 
get a first and still, you know, then if you could figure out another way to procure another first from somebody, you know, now, now you got three firsts and three firsts are always like a, a, a starting point for another stud. Like, right. a, like a, one of these high end picks when you're halfway through the season and you're like, all right, I'll give you these, your team sucks. You got this one good guy. I'll give you these three firsts for uh, this guy. Of some people, it, it, you know, again, this is the thing you could probably say every single time we record. Every draft is different. You might be able to get more than you ever thought to move back three spots. But you also don't be surprised if you're in the middle of the first round. For sure. Well, and and you go back and you talk to the next eight people in the row and they're like, I don't want to move up. Okay. Well, if you don't want to move up from your, you know, if you don't want to go from two, three to one, seven, or, you know, if you don't want to move up from two, two to one, six, cause you see eight guys that you like, how much would you pay me to bring your third rounder up or your fourth rounder up somebody, you know, you're talking, you're, you're down here in no man's land. If you're talking about fourth round pick while you're in the first round still, you know, mm-hmm. um, because it just, it, it's very often and very normal to talk to the next five or six guys in line. And they're like, I like where I'm at. I'm going to stay put. That's the quickest way to just get deflated. You get three right. or four people in a row, three or four people in a row. I like where I'm at. I'm going to stay put. And you're like, dang, man, I don't know if I'm going to get this trade back done. Okay. Well, now how much, I mean, like you said, do you want AJ Brown? Or you want DK Metcalf? Or you want Justin Jefferson? There's a good chance there might be five picks in between them. So maybe you just get a second round pick next year to back up five picks. You worry about getting a first rounder later. You could still get your guy. And if you don't, that means all those wide receivers win in a row. And guess what? You take Najee Harris, you know? And so you got a second round pick next year. And now you're starting, you're building something and you trade back later. To, to continue doing whatever you want to do or, right. you know, hey, you, I got a free second round pick. I'll use that to trade up into a spot where, you know, hey, I'm in, I see two more players left that I, I got to have these two guys and there's eight picks left. And after that, I don't really care. They all kind of run the same for the next three rounds. Uh, you know, now I'm bringing, now I'm giving that second round pick away to come up from the round like you know even if it's like all right well i got to pick in eight picks well maybe i don't have to use that second round or maybe somebody will take that second rounder to take the next you know i'm talking about a sixth round but I, maybe i can bring my seventh up into the early six and now i got two sixes and take two players in that range or i could take my two sixes and try to get a and add something else and move up to the fourth yeah yeah i like the idea i like the idea of moving moving up later picks to try to move back and get into that second third round and you give them some of your later picks in the draft to be like all right well you know i'll give you my you know 10 6 and and 12 6 to you know help me get up move yeah. back and elevate those well like like you said you, if you're sitting at 1 6 or 1 7 you're like you're very uncertain about who you would like to take because you like 12 guys right like you got it you just got to be prepared to obviously you want to come out shooting strong and be like there's no chance i'm not taking dk metcalf here if any uh, if anybody want to come up and get him you know or you shake somebody's boots up and i know it's not really yeah. kosher to talk about players during the draft but if you're at one six and you send a message to the to the entire league and you're like I'm definitely taking either T- DK Metcalf here or AJ Brown. I haven't decided, but I'm going to make one of those two of my pick in 30 minutes. Guess what? A guy that's five picks back says, dang. I thought I was going to get one of those guys. I'm gonna get, I thought I was going to get one of them, but now yeah. he's already put both of those guys in, out, out here in the, in the world and in the message. And there's no way both of those guys make it now because he just told everybody he's, picking between those two so i know that you know what i mean so now yeah. you just gotta you manipulate the situation a little bit right and you might have to you can conjure up your own trade market if there seems to be not one yeah exit yeah all right so let's keep it moving a little bit of trade talk there uh breathing I've, hot fire there that's what that was uh then you know so that was the one six We're talking to, I, I feel like you got to move off of that pick i would like i said all of those scenarios, I like the idea of moving like an eight and a six and then trying to just get as many of my picks before that from that guy who wants to swap picks with me moved up as many times as I can to maybe give him some of those back end picks where, hey, now I've got I already picked up three extra dudes because I elevated all these picks and maybe picked double in a round or two. But now, you know, I might not pick in the eighth and seventh or sixth round. Cool with that. Right. Um, so. Uh, let's keep it moving here. We got DK Metcalf at one seven, like we just talked about. Then we got Tyreek Hill at one eight. Um, 
Then Chubb at one nine. Chubb was absolutely fantastic through 12 games last year. Uh, probably going to be another another good one here. Chubb gives me a little bit of pause just because we were talking pre-show about, you know, getting burned by some running backs. He probably has one of the worst injuries on his body right now out of any of these big time running backs that, you know, we've seen some drop offs from some guys with some bad injuries. We've also seen plenty of guys never to be heard from again, never to be heard of an injury again after they had a bad knee injury. Yeah. Look at Adrian Peterson. Um, well, he's a different beast, but yeah, I Jamal mean, Charles came out and rushed for Willis it. McGahee's and Frank Gore's. If you want to throw it way back, you know, there's been plenty of guys that went the other way, but you know, recently, Chubb's the guy that gives me a little bit of a scare. And it's probably the only reason that gives me pause to not take him, not be like all in and like, oh yeah, let me definitely get him at one nine, one ten. So I like the team. I like the I like the early second round Chubb a lot better than I do than the late first. This is round. a mental thing, you know. Mm-hmm. A yeah. lot of the times I feel you on that. Um then I was up, I took AJ Brown. He's my number one dynasty receiver. Um, I like all of these sophomore running backs. I like Najee Harris. Um, I take AJ Brown a lot just to see how my team pans out. It gives then what it does do is gives me one stud. And then if I can go three wide receivers or three running backs here, then I feel really good about it. And, you know, I can maybe stab on a tight end and maybe one more running back through there. And no, I just have an anchor at my wide receiver position, much like maybe some people like to spin the running back position. Hey, I got one anchor. And then, you know, I'm going to take some shots later where, you know, AJ Brown does give me that one anchor. And I, you know, I like, Clyde Edwards. I like Swift. I like Dobbins. I like Harris. So I know I can get those guys and run it back. I like Zeke. Um, and, and hopefully it pans out. So in my third round pick that I can grab another running back and it happened to this time, but I took AJ Brown here. Then we got Najee Harris, uh, at one eleven here. Uh, so we are going to do, uh, an offshoot couple of videos on this. We want to talk a little bit more in depth about Najee Harris and where we feel comfortable taking him. Is this the spot? Should it be sooner? Should it be later? Um, but we're going to be putting those video videos out every couple of days uh, after this video gets released. So make sure you subscribe so you can get notification when that Najee Harris in-depth talks comes out. And if you're listening to this later, there'll be a nice little link, you know, right above somewhere over here uh, <laughs> to click on Najee Harris uh, and hear us discuss that at more length. Uh, so then we're going to keep it moving here. Devonte Adams goes at 112, a little bit of an older receiver there with a, with a, uh, question mark at quarterback. I think everybody in, in our room right now is a little scared of Devonte Adams. Any, anybody got some quick thoughts on Devonte there at one twelve or two, one, even. I mean, I don't, know how you're not, I don't know how you're not scared. I, 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 this is where he should go. Um, if you know, he would be a couple picks earlier than this. If we knew Aaron Rodgers wasn't leaving. Um, and then we've seen him go all the way down into the third round of some of these mocks. Um, sometimes, right. and it seems like nobody even wants to touch him in some mocks and in other mocks, like all about the room, you know, Quiddy comes to you through here at one twelve, and he's like, oh, well, this was taken back a little while ago, but this you is, know, Rogers was definitely after the draft, yeah. which, you know, draft day was the big Rogers. Oh right. my God. Rogers might not ever play again for the Packers. So, I mean, Quiddy comes through here and picks up Adams, obviously, um, if Rogers plays, you should be scared, but right now is a great time to take a gamble on picking up Adams cheap in a startup right now. If Adams is in the third round, man, I, you yeah, once be, he, once he gets into that geez. half of the bottom half of the second, early thirds, geez, it gets what such a, value and to maybe even a little trade market for Devonte Adams as well. Not in startups for sure. Um, we did do this draft of, of several weeks back. So it's, that was before Aaron Rodgers was officially holding out. Well, I mean, at the draft, he kind of knew that there were yeah. some problems. So. It was before he didn't it's show up building. OTAs, yeah, right. but it was but definitely still. Was after draft night. Um, so then J.K. Dobbins goes, then Swift goes, then Clyde edwards alaire goes. So now we got this, this big uh, pocket of all the sophomores outside of Jonathan Taylor. I believe Akers is closer to where these other sophomores are going. Um, but again, we want to get into that, really talk about it, see who – who we like, where they should go, if there's any receivers in between and which guys that should go where, all that kind of stuff and, and kind of rank these guys in. But I do believe that they're all kind of in this tier right here as the next guys off the board. Um, but again, there's going to be another video uh, that will be released, you know, a few days after the Najee Harris video. Uh, so be sure to subscribe so you can hear us really get in to see who we like, why maybe we're not taking Cam Akers at 1-6. You know, if DeAndre Swift's the guy that we would that we like out of, if it's Antonio Gibson, uh, so definitely Gibson. subscribe so you can uh, hear us break that down. 
here. So we're going to kind of keep it moving. Then we got Justin Jefferson at two, four. Um, so that's a, probably a pretty good value from where Justin Jefferson typically goes. Yeah. He's not going that late. He's not gonna make it there. Everything, anything can happen in a draft. Right. Anything can happen. Justin Except Jefferson, Justin probably Jefferson being that late. In the Jefferson Jefferson's probably not going two four. Nick Chubb, you could flip those picks and that team looks just fine. Right. Nick Chubb at one nine. Sure. You take Justin Jefferson at one nine and Nick Chubb at two four, and you're like, look at my team. Right. So it it happens. Um so then then we have Zeke. And right now I think Zeke's one of the best maybe values in the draft here. Um, this is a Cowboys team that had 111 targets via uh, from fantasy pros here, 111, 111 running back targets. Um, that's about mid pack. You can't sort it by who had the most, but 111 seems to be around mid pack. I didn't break it all down, um, but that's more than a lot of people would, I think, think that the Cowboys had. And Zeke had 71 of those to Tony Pollard's 40. And to me, it seemed like, Fantasy Pros was going with the top three running backs on the team. And that was and going through their targets and then ranking, going, you know, listing their targets and then kind of putting them uh, how they were. So those were all the targets. No other running back apparently had a target on the on the uh, Cowboys. Uh, but to, for Zeke to have 71 was was eye opening to me. Um, he's pretty much the same age as Dalvin Cook and Alvin Kamara within a month or two. And those guys are still up at the top. Nick Chubb, not not 26 until December. But again, I think he's probably has the worst previous injury on his knees than any of these other guys. Um, he's also maybe in Nick Chubb probably has the best back next to him in the backfield. Like you might like Tony Pollard or whatever. You might like uh, Chuba Hubbard. You might like I don't even know who the Giants are. You might like Alexander Madison, but like. Kareem Hunt's a real deal and will be a starting running back if some if some dumb shit didn't happen, if he didn't do some dumb shit. Um, so, you know, that's a little bit knock on, on Chubb. Um, and, you know, I just feel like everybody thinks Zeke's dead now, never mind the fact that he had 71 targets and Chubb's only had 18 uh, last year because uh, Alvin Kamara is getting all those targets, much like everybody thinks that Tony Pollard's taking all Zeke's targets. Well, Kareem Hunt is actually taking all of Nick Chubb's <laughs> targets. Um right. And I, Nick Chubb is fantastic. I'm not trying to hate on him at all. He was RB 11 through 12 games. That's ridiculous. Absolutely crushed it. Um, but Zeke was still RB nine through 15 games and was definitely the most nicked up through the season that he had ever been playing on the worst team that he had ever been on. Um, so he's trash and supposedly going to be passed by Pollard uh, because he doesn't absolutely crush like he normally does. And I don't think this man's done yet. Uh, they're saying he's in the best shape of his life. Never heard that before. Never heard that before, but take that for what it is. <laughs> and again, he's probably in the best situation out of any of those top running backs. Maybe Christian McCaffrey because of the way they, I like, you know, what Matt rule and uh, the dude from Ellet Joe, um, Brady. Joe Brady are doing. And we saw Mike Davis be a stud and we saw how great Christian McCaffrey was. He was still like the RB six through weeks all later. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely crushing. Uh, but out of all those other teams, you know, Dalvin cook, probably not Jonathan Taylor, probably in a better offensive situation as far as the offensive line's really good. Now they did lose, uh, Costanzo and they have weapons everywhere. So that may be comparable, but Barkley, no Alvin Kamara, not anymore, not without drew Brees. Um, so, you know, yeah, I like the Brown situation. The Browns are going to be good again, but uh, Zeke is, I feel like he's just kind of getting shit on because he didn't have the best season that he's been having all throughout his career. I don't think he should be so far outside of that top six or top five. Like he is right now. He's DLF RB or uh, pick 20 right now. Um, and then he went two five here. So I think he's one of the best values going right now. And I don't think he's done by any means. Thoughts? I like the value play there. I mean, just a quick one. I mean, if Christian McCaffrey suits up and then finishes the game, he gets 30 points at least. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, I like the value of Zeke in the startups this year. I like, I like it a ton. I, you've, um, he seems older. He feels older. You got the trick, you know, he get he's he's had more carries than the other guys. He hasn't missed any games. That's why he's had all those carries. And he looks like he could easily get out of shape the quickest. Um, he's a thicker, bigger guy, you know. So that some of those other guys are just Zeke seems like he could potentially, you know, 
eat feed too himself. Much. But you know, they are me. saying he looks phenomenal. They're saying and he looks and amazing. If, and and that's not the reports we were getting last offseason, right? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I think that hurt a lot of people. 2020 was mess, and a lot of people I came in. Cabo and, just partying it up. But yeah, but a lot of people came in. Everybody got hurt last year. Um, nobody was in shape. Uh, yeah, I, I like. I, I'm with you, Casey. I like this. I like this. The Zeke. I like the. This team here takes Tyreek Hill, Zeke Elliott, and Austin Eckler. I mean, they're obviously contending for a championship. You know, yeah, that's strong. Uh, it, that's you know you you could uh you could replace Tyreek Hill with AJ Brown, and you knock off three years of your first pick, and you know that kind of you know I, I, some points. Yeah, you sacrifice a few points potentially, um, but you also bring in a little bit more stability age wise. You know that that's that you got to. In my mind, in my mind, I'm looking field guy. Right, right. In my mind, I'm looking at yeah that too. You you would the likelihood of Tyreek Hill doing something that would back up his dynasty value versus AJ Brown. I think you would have to side with AJ Brown less likely to do something big. Time. He shouldn't do. Um, I'm I'm looking at it like. If this, because again, this NFL is 100% injury risk, right? Everybody's going to get hurt. So I'm looking at it like, what happens if this dude blows his knee out and he misses a year? How is that going to affect my dynasty team as a whole? And of course, you can look at it like what happens, and you, and you need to look at it like this. You need to look at it like what happens if the dude stays perfectly healthy and he has the season that he, what if he has a career year? What does that look like? If Zeke Elliott has a career year, it looks like he's taking your team to the playoffs on his back, you know. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of how I look at it that when I'm trying to draft my team. It's like, what? How much space do I have for something going bad? And how much? Um, how awesome could it be if this dude crushes it this year? Um, and so you know, Zeke obviously has the ceiling of just about everybody. Um, it's, it's not many people has the guaranteed carries the the offense that'll take him to the inside the five yard line early and often um targets. and targets exactly he's not you know he does have a capable backup that can come in and suck up p- p- volume but i like the first stat uh off the out of the gate for casey was yeah but he doubled him targets last year um, yeah which is you know tony pollard can come in and do something but there's tony pollard is not coming in and taking anything crazy away from zeke that's not going to make it an rb1 if he's healthy and if he isn't healthy that's the best handcuff in the game probably so i think that's even that, that's great for zeke you just got to make sure you get tony pollard if you got zeke and you're True. you're fucking fantastic boom locked right. up there's not like everybody thinks alexander madison was going to be that guy for dalvin cook it hasn't been it hasn't happened i don't think it's ever going to happen y'all boys are way over drafting him constantly and tony pollard he, I can, he, I can still good. overdraft Tony Pollard a little bit. I think you yeah. should if you have Zeke. Especially if you have Zeke. If you, if you are serious about this game, you're not going to look at anybody and say Madison's better than Pollard. Regardless if better or not, it's just, it just seems like opportunity-wise like and, and team build-wise and what they do when you – know, I just feel like, yeah, Pollard's good. Well, just, just, well, like to, if, just to finish this up on my point before you get go going, ahead. Jay, if Zeke goes down, Pollard's going to get a ton plus passes. If Dalvin goes down, Madison's probably going to get a ton of rushes, but he's not going to get the targets that Pollard would get. I don't even know if he was get. We've seen him go down and still not get everything that we think that he, would, that he was going to get. Like It would just be like, oh, he's out now. He's basically doing what Dalvin's doing, and it's not really how it's ever gone for Madison. And we have seen that with Pollard a little bit. So yeah, exactly. Good, good, good point. I mean, not to take anything away from Zeke, but if Dalvin gets hurt, I don't care who you back up. He is. He ain't gonna come in and do what Dalvin was doing. Right. As the perennial, the only guy on this show that would ever talk that, that any had any hesitation towards Zeke. Like I, I never wanted to take him at one five, and I probably should have. At two five, it's a no brainer. I mean, it's just such such great value. Like it just doesn't make any sense, really. Like. He's just like, it feels like he's old, but I mean, he's just as old as all these other dudes. CMC is going to be 26 next year. Dalvin's going to be 26 in August. Kamara is going to be 26 next month. Uh, Chubb, 26 in December. Saquon just turned 24 and Jonathan Taylor's obviously super young, but he's just as old as those dudes and he's in a better situation. And and then when you look at the contract, they can't even get out of this contract because it's like 30, 
It's going to be 23 million dead next year. There's no way they get rid of him. So you're, you've got him for this year and you got him for next year. And then it's still going to be over almost 7 million the year after that to cut him dead. So like I could see him going into his age 28 season and getting three more solid years out of Zeke and, and, and he'd be a catalyst to help you win games and, and potentially win championships. So I, in the second round, Ezekiel Elliott, I mean, if he hasn't, if he has a bomb ass year, he's probably moving up next year in the, in, in startups, like his value could increase next year, which maybe not the case for some of these other running backs. I'm not sure it might increase a little bit like, but I don't even care about that. I'm just trying to fucking win. True. Like, uh, give me Zeke. I'm overexposed to Zeke. So in, in actual and in non startups, I'm okay with maybe trying to see if right now I'm not, but once he's in the season, putting his balls on people's foreheads, like I might be trying to move him in a spot or two, just cause I got to, I have Zeke literally everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is a value that I can't pass up. Let me get him. Holler at you. Yeah. Boy. The, we share three teams in FFPC Zeke's on all three of those. Teams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got him. Holler at me. All right. So let's keep it moving Two six Gibson. He's in that sophomore regime. We're going to talk about those and figure that out. Uh, in another show, there'll be a link, uh, somewhere probably wasn't where I just pointed probably be top before. right kids. You know where it is. Yeah. you'll see. It. Um, so now we're getting on to the tight ends. And again, I don't want to kill you with this, but we're going to do a, another side video of where to take these tight ends. And especially we're talking tight end premium here. So the tight ends get a little um, bumped up here, especially the good ones. Uh, we, we're going to do a video on that. So subscribe of, of if this was properly rated, properly placed, and then which ones are kind of in that tier, wh- how many of them there are, and then which ones are in the next tier, and then when to just pass on them. Um, so we'll, that'll be coming up as well as the Najee video, as the sophomore running back video, and we'll do a where to take tight ends video. Uh, so Kittle's the next pick, and then Big Co's up with Pitts here. Uh, probably probably dra- <laughs> we talked about it. Probably drafting Pitts at his ceiling here uh, <laughs> for, for life. <laughs> But, um, you know, what do you think, Bitco? Well, it's, it doesn't mean it's tied in premium, correct? I didn't. Right. Do Don't give away it. too much about anything because we're going to do another video. I just wanted it's your guy. So I'll give. Sure. Well, I mean, I, I think they go earlier than this. Um, I took pits because I had, this was a mock. I had, and I didn't have any pits at the time. And I was like, I got to see pits name on my, on my team. Right. Same um, with me and DK. I don't have any DK anywhere. I got him in all these mocks. Cause it's just right, fun to exactly. see your guy on the team. Yeah, even if it's a mock. Exactly. I don't think, um, I mean, might've been joking there, but when, I mean, Kelsey's mid thirties now, so he's down to two ten in this mock draft. But if you're playing for money, Kelsey's getting drafted earlier than this. Um, and Kittle, I mean, and, and Pitts being so young and Early especially with, 30s. Kittle's on especially, 31. especially with the, uh, Kelsey H- Julio Kelsey, trade right. now, um, you know, Kelsey's been late first, mid first, early second round pick and mm-hmm. tight end premium for two or three years now. And I think that's hit the differentiator that he has become and what Kittle showed us and what Waller showed us and what people want Pitts to be. I think Pitts goes late first, early second and every tight end premium startup from here on out. Very um, well could. And and if Kittle would put together a full season of not getting nicked up and playing, like he'd be end of the first round pick and have passed Kelsey every single time uh and and every draft because he is r- absolutely ridiculous there's just a little like kelsey never misses a game and kittle can leave you hanging from time to time and i think yeah and but i mean kittle's such a good blocker yeah you know so yeah we'll we'll leave more on the on the table for the p- tight end conversation yeah and, you know why you draft them and why they're elevated and don't listen to some other people when they tell you to just not do it um, so then we got Michael Thomas at two nine. Oh, how the mighty have fallen here. Uh, obviously no more drew Brees. I think if James Winston plays Michael Thomas can be just fine. Um, and he's absolutely great and was just banged up last year. Sucked that drew Brees last season. Didn't get a full, uh, season with Michael Thomas here, but I think this is, this is nice value on Michael Thomas. Oh, it's great value. I think, I think it's proper, properly rated. Okay. Might even be a little high. Woo. Let me get oh, Calvin no. Ridley. Let me get Calvin Ridley. Wow. All right. Hold wow. Time. Wow. All day. Didn't see that coming. What? Maybe we Calvin. should make another video. Didn't know I needed to make another video on that, but maybe over <laughs> here Calvin or Ridley's here we should. He's a fucking stud, and he's about to blow up even more. Than he's <laughs> Michael Thomas up. isn't a stud? Michael, Michael Thomas, Thomas is a stud, just, bro. Just, he's um, about to have... If James, James, if James comes back, eyes. comes back like Jesus on Easter, like I mean, it's over. Michael Thomas is seen, a great value. We haven't seen 
Jameis Winston play since he got his eyes fixed. I mean, and he could, he's, we know Jameis Winston could throw for a bunch of touchdowns and 5,000 yards. If he could just not throw the grenades, we're okay. And I think if, if, if the old uh, Sean, Payton Sean Payton could see him not turn it over, he's absolutely going to be thrilled to turn it over to Jameis Winston and just watch his guys eat. It's going to, and Michael Thomas is going to be the, the prime beneficiary of the, nom, 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 nom. it's going to happen. Now with Taysom, eh, but I don't, I don't believe in Taysom. All right, anyway, uh, maybe we should make another video on Michael Thomas. Travis Kelsey goes to ten. Derrick Henry to eleven. At this point, you got to smash Derrick Henry, right? Or are you still off of Derrick Henry right here, Big Co? I think. He, I mean, I'm not taking him. I can't take him in the first round. I have a hard time taking him in front of any of those sophomore running backs. He's been absolutely ridiculous. He, yeah, he'll probably fall off a cliff maybe sooner than some of these other guys. And he is a little bit older, but he had a front half of the career that wasn't super loaded with a million carries. <laughs> yeah. Um, you got to hit that. But I mean, there's, I don't worry about all that. So what do you think? I, I think, think it's a smash. You, you don't seem convinced. I don't think, I mean, it's definitely not, not a smash. I mean, it, I would probably take Waller over Henry here. Um, I don't want to take a chance on missing Waller if the, if that's my spot. I'm like, all right, because uh, maybe Henry's there when he get back. Maybe not. I'm happy to take if if Aaron jo- if Aaron Rodgers is in Green Bay, I'll take Aaron Jones, and I'd rather have Waller and Aaron Jones than Derrick Henry and no Waller. Um, so I mean, I, I got like no that. problem. That's I got fine. no problem at all with fine Derrick with Henry. That. It's just you know he's it never had the what is the the 370 carry curse broken before is, you know, I think uh, just a ton of carries last couple of years. And he's done nothing but phenomenal with them. And I think Julio coming over is huge. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you know, I, I think uh, this was probably pre Julio trade. Um, so I think maybe people were like, Oh, Julio's over there. AJ Brown's over there. Defense cannot get, you know, there's, I think somebody said there was a good, there was um some interesting, how do you play? How do you defend the Titans now? Mm-hmm. Because if you don't put eight in the box to tackle Derrick Henry, he never gets tackled. And if you put eight in the box and Julio and AJ Brown are only outside, you're in big trouble. Um, so it is going to be a, a Tannehill might be the biggest winner. Um, mm-hmm. Good for Derrick Henry. It's a good pick. I mean, you can't, you can't go wrong with this. This is again, it kind of goes back to, I mean, Derrick Henry, you're trying to win championships. You, you have to, if you draft Derrick Henry, you need to, draft i'm not saying start drafting every 28 year old guy in the book but just understand that either a you come out of this going i'm trying to win a championship and keep the best value possible or b i'm going to trade derrick henry to a contender and get a haul in the first three weeks of the season because you don't want to have derrick henry surrounded by a bunch of 22 year olds that need to have some time and to Mm -hmm. develop yeah it's very it's very dependent of your pick taking him that high you got to build your team accordingly uh, yeah. which, you know, he kind of doesn't do a terrible like Kyler Murray, probably, you know, I don't know. But then Brandon Ayuk, young but good. Cooper Cup older could be great, probably getting probably good value on him, probably getting shit on a little bit. But then Julio Jones, so Robbie Anderson, he does have some older guys. And then Darren Waller in there with Dalvin Cook. So nice mix of like what you're saying with some more veteran guys in there to, to that, you know, are going to score points and you're not taking as much of a chance on. So it could yeah. hurt you long term, but you're trying to win money. Yeah, so. interesting. I said I'd take Waller. This dude got Waller too. Right. Waller and Henry. Right. Uh, so there I've goes never Calvin. seen Hawkinson go in front of Waller, by the way. Well, yeah, well, that's a I've never seen that. Calvin Ridley goes 212. Jay Wayne's super excited about that, apparently. Strong, strong pick. Man. Yeah. I mean, I like Calvin Ridley. He was always a guy that I would push down a little bit, but he has earned it. He deserves to be up there. Hawkinson, although I love TJ Hawkinson, I think he's been great. Uh, I think he is it's this the sky is the limit here. I, you gotta take Waller ahead of him. Our oh, guy, no doubt about it. Our I love Bobcat too. is uh, related to Hawkinson. Not really, but he takes him a lot. But, um, so he took Hawkinson there. I don't love the pick, and we'll get into that a little bit more on the tight end breakdown. Uh, but I still, I do like. It's not any, it's not any shade on Hawkinson, but I mean, I, I feel like you just gotta, you gotta go Waller there. They, these don't probably worry. some other guys. They're not, they're not gonna be close enough in the draft. You're not gonna have to make that. I, yeah, that shouldn't be a decision. Agree. Darren Waller is gonna go a whole round ahead of this, and especially in preview. Yeah. And a not premium. And it sounds Hawkinson's going to go a fair amount later. So, yeah. Now we're in the third round. We've got Hawkinson. We got Waller. We got Aaron Jones coming up. So now we're getting into this basically the last real big group of running backs here. 
Um, and then it's just, you know, it starts to get so dry and, you know, you got, you got Carson and hunt who kind of roll into the fourth round a lot of times. Um, but then it's just dark. It's the dry it's, zone. It's, it's the dry zone. It's just dry ass running backs. No wet ass peas. Yeah. Just so we got Aaron Jones, you got Joe Mixon, you got ETN, you got Eckler, Montgomery, um, Javante Jacobs and Miles Sanders. So these, you know, you kind of have a big tier of running backs here, in my opinion, for the most part, a lot of those guys are kind of going next. Um, they're a little spread out here. That's kind of where I see it. So we'll be doing another video on that kind of like how I see it. The last frontier of, of good game changing potential running backs. Now that Chris Carson and Kareem Hunt aren't really good. They're just not quite in that tier of those guys anymore. And Kareem Hunt could be, if he was just soloing, uh, but he's not quite, and Chris, and Chris Carson could put together a season for, that, for sure. He's just a little older than, than some of those guys and a little more seemingly fruit banged up and just, yeah, ha, has some issues. He could, if Chris Carson stays healthy with Seattle, he, he could do damage. Yeah. So there, there's, they want um, him to do damage. We'll have a video coming out here with kind of ranking that tier, which receivers we would put in front of them where, which ones we have kind of where, and, you know, yeah, so, having said that, I'm definitely taking Ayuk over Carson in the startup. There's no chance I'm taking Chris Carson over Ayuk. <laughs> so go ahead and subscribe so you can get that video. Those will be all trickling out slowly after we do this mock. And if you're watching this after that, there'll be a link for that. Um, and you can click right on it if you're interested in that particular spot. Um, and I'll put a link to the this draft in the podcast. So if you guys are just listening and you want to look at this draft board, you can just click that boom. link and check it out. Boom. So there goes Aaron Jones. There goes Mixon. Uh, then Big Co comes in with CD Lamb here at three five. Um, if Aaron Rodgers plays, or if if it obviously just being dynasty, if it wasn't the draft board would look completely different. If Aaron Rodgers, if they make up with Aaron Rodgers and give him this huge contract extension and say, "Hey, we love you," this is the best value in a draft. What Aaron Jones? Yeah, yeah. He's done Aaron Jones, slay. Jonathan Taylor, Travis Kelsey, Aaron Jones. Give me that three all day. Yeah. I like Obviously that. Obviously, Kelsey, you know, Kelsey's hadn't missed a game in five years, 31. He could be slaying for three more years. Taylor's a young stud. If Aaron Jones has Aaron Rodgers playing this year, but if he even I mean, if he could get him for if you could lock up Aaron Jones, Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay, probably not gonna happen. But Aaron Jones is oh screaming value crush. for sure. He 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 should be probably a little higher. So great start. Now we got Joe Mixon and we'll get him. We'll, we'll touch on a lot more of these running backs in depth, who we like some wise and, and which uh, receivers we would kind of fit in there around them or maybe even tight ends. Um, so then Joe Mixon goes at three, four CD lamb for big co at, at three, five. Uh, you got a quick thought on that. We'll, we might double back to this in a second here, or maybe we'll say I was surprised that he was still on the board. Honestly. Yeah. To be the young stud wide receiver that he is, I was surprised he made it a three five. I'll take I'll take him at three five all day long. All right. Uh, so then we got Stefan Diggs at three six. That's probably strong there. He's really fucking goo. <laughs> um. Then here comes Travis Etienne for Jay Wayne. Yeah, boy. Pretty much no doubt in your mind when That's that was coming. That was the fast Super pick. strong value there, man. Three seconds came off the clock. It's an hour clock. Jay Wayne immediately selected ETN. Um, three, hour clock, three seconds came off. <laughs> All Steve was just watching so sweaty for like three picks. Like, I'm not going to get Travis. And Big uh, Co totally blew it by not taking Travis. But. So then there goes Austin Eckler. Um and then Patrick Mahomes goes off the board. So this is the first quarterback at three, nine. Is this appropriate? Uh, properly rated? Is this the good spot for the first quarterback? What do you guys think about that? I, th I think probably I don't, Jamar I don't Chase hate needs it. to come off the board before, before the quarterback. But, but, but then looking at the rest of the guys, I can't argue that you took Patrick Mahomes over David Montgomery. As much as I love David Montgomery, I, I agree Patrick with that. Mahomes I mean, I, I have no problem with you taking Mahomes over um, some of these guys, but I, I like I like the Jamar Chase call, just the potential. If he hits, you know, I can't see um, how he can't hit. That it just seems like a right. done deal. I don't have a problem yeah. with it, but I'm not doing it. Uh, there's just too Agreed. many other. There's too many. There's Kyler. There's Josh Allen. There's Lamar. There's Herbert. There's Dak. There's Trevor Lawrence. There's I, I'm just not doing it. Especially um, in this I don't spot have a problem with it, nine. and I'm absolutely taking David Montgomery over fucking Patrick Mahomes in a one quarterback league. Suck my dick. At Let's three go. nine, <laughs> you can't. I will not. 
you can't even lose a, a, a difference making quarterback if there's a run, you know, right. yeah. before your next pick. So, I mean, you take the, you know, you take a stud, not quarterback position in your third pick. And if for some reason, and you saw it, you took Patrick Mahomes and then nobody even took another quarterback before it got back right. to you. And nobody even took another quarterback the whole next round because they know, hey, what well, they're looking, they're like, well, I could take Josh Allen, but Kyler Murray's there, Lamar Jackson, Justin Herbert, Dak Prescott, Russell Wilson. What am I doing? You know, so yeah. nobody took it. That's, you know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with having Patrick Mahomes, but it's gotta, crazy that Herbert is at five eight and Burrow's down there at you know nine something. Like, is all of a sudden Joe Burrow's not as good as Justin Herbert? Like, I don't understand that. Like, I I don't I don't understand it. it's going on in Superflex a lot. It goes on in a lot of drafts. I don't really understand that. But like, you're talking about Joe Burrow in the ninth round. Yeah, let me get that. I can follow it up with Trey Lance or Fields a little later. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll take those two guys and I'm gonna just keep drafting players. I'm not upset about you taking Patrick Mahomes. I'm not gonna be like, oh, it's a terrible pick. You're an idiot. But like, I'm 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 not. I'm pretty excited when I see it come off in the third because I'm like, oh, one more guy, one more guy mm-hmm. for me. Yeah. All right, Baker. What do you, what were you gonna say? I was just going to say you talked about uh, Herbert and uh, Burrow and the dis- discrepancy in the uh, draft capital there, and just if Burrow didn't get a knee, get his knee on completely ninety degree angle, he'd be right there yeah. with him. Yeah, you know, I'll that's take just, the injury discount. I, I feel good good enough about surgeons and, and rehab nowadays, especially for a quarterback. A yeah, good point. If, I mean, if, well, if we're you know, okay like, with taking Dak Prescott here in the sixth round, who I saw ankle completely explode and is more reliant on his legs than Joe Burrow is, then I'm fine with taking the the injury discount on. Yeah. Well, like you said, I mean, I'm fine with taking uh fields, you know, fields in the 12th and Stafford in the 14th and just calling it a day. Yeah. Trey, I love the Trey. 14th. That's an MVP possibility. You know, I I love the Trey Lance, uh, Aaron Rodgers back to back that you Mm -hmm. put together. That's that's I've done that in a bunch of these bunch of these mocks. It's usually it's been uh, Aaron Rodgers or Stafford or Justin Fields and Jalen Hurts. Two of those. Just give me two of those guys. So I know I got one yeah. nasty quarterback. Like you said, I waited until 12 and 13th round went back to back Trey Lance, Aaron Rodgers. So love that. Um, love that. Yeah. So let's keep it moving here. We'll try to move a little quicker. Um, we got. David Montgomery, that was my pick. Um, holler at your boy. Jamar Chase goes next. That's good value for sure at 311. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, 312. Strong value there. Uh, then here comes Miles Sanders, uh, Javante Williams, and Josh Jacobs, three more running backs. And now we are officially in the dry zone. Like, yeah. So this is, this is why you got to get the running backs early. And if you don't, like... I think I've just uh, Kareem. I'm still fine with Kareem Hunt, and I'm still fine with Chris Carson. Both very, very good players. I have no problem putting them on your teams. Um, but when you don't get running back sorted out early, you're pretty much consistently now losing the value battle in the mid to late rounds that you're about to go through after this fourth round. Unless you decide to like just completely abandon the running back position and just waiting to see if one starts to fall in place of value on the board way further down the board. Uh, I feel like you're just better off just knowing that, hey, I'm going to need a running back down the line. I'm going to try to get Naheen Hines. I'm going to try to you know pick these other guys that are later that could catch some balls or some guys who are in good positions, maybe at the you know James Connors of the world or whoever, if they fall down later and the Devin Singletary's and the Daryl Henderson's, all those kind of guys. I'm fine. You know, you can start stacking those guys again in the ninth, eighth, ninth, tenth round. But through this fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth round, I mean, I took ronald jones in the seventh round i don't really have a problem with taking ronald jones in the seventh round because he is as old as basically Najee harris and just keeps getting better and is the last year of his contract but he's really like the only one that i'm like yeah i'm pretty stoked about that yeah you get mike davis but you're probably playing that's a we get in a year maybe right uh you know i took i took james robinson in this in the eighth round uh you know i I guess I'm fine with that. I don't mind that. I still think James Robinson is good. I don't know what's going to happen over the next two years at the eighth round. Yeah, I guess I'm okay with taking it, but like Raheem Mostert's yeah, I guess Melvin Gordon in the eighth round is probably fine, but you know, anywhere from the fourth to the sixth round, seventh round, eighth round, sometime like ninth round, you just, if you, you could just take a million wide receivers and tight ends through there and get very, the, the value is so much better on any of those guys that you got to take such a bath in value where you got to take those running backs. It's like you, you're out of the dry zone, which is why I think it's important to get the, the running backs early if it falls that way or just completely fucking punt. Yeah, I agree. Um, I punted in a handful of these mocks and, and enjoyed the wide receivers and uh, value that I was able to stack up. 
Um, I was looking at your Ronald Jones and your uh, James Robinson, so I kind of lost myself. And I, Josh Jacobs in the fourth for me is huge. Uh, we talked about that in the uh, Patreon. Yeah, when, when we get into these other videos of this last tier of good running backs, like I got holler at Josh you know, Jacobs. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm. I love some fourth round Josh Jacobs and I'm if I get stuck and I have a couple of good wide receivers at the front and I felt like I had to take this guy over that guy and I didn't force a running back I'm not going to chase these guys through these rounds is is Chris is Chase Edmonds going to have a good year probably could he be really really good and score a ton of points probably and he definitely could but I'm not going to force it because he's a running back versus uh, a very, very solid dynasty asset type player. Yeah, I could have um, taken Chase Edmonds, but I took Jerry Judy. Exactly. You know exactly. Exactly. I, I would do the I would do the exact that's a good one. That's a good side by side comparison. Jerry Judy, super young, probably saying gonna, that I was already stacked. I had I took three running backs in a row though. So it kind true. of makes my mind set a little different. But again, you're losing the value battle with Jerry Judy versus Chase Edmonds. Even Chase Edmonds might val might value be kind of close to start this year. It is obviously right now in this draft, but Jerry Judy's is Chase Edmonds value probably isn't going any much higher next year. And Jerry Judy's could easily he could his value could go through the roof. Well, um, all right. Well, here's a good example. I'm this is one this is like my least favorite mock draft team that I put together, but even having only one running back into the sixth and seventh round here, seventh and eighth round, I wasn't gonna chase the Miles Gaskin. Did he look good at at times? Sure. Do I have any do I have any intentions of um putting him in front of somebody else in long term dynasty? Well, actually, I got these. I got this round direction. I I took Pittman, looking at it like I had a chance for Miles Gaskin. He was gone, but I will tell you now, if Miles Gaskin was on the board and I needed a running back, I'm still taking Pittman. I like Pittman dynasties. I like I like Pittman as a wide receiver. I like mm -hmm. what I saw from him as a rookie, and I like the way it could play out for him. He's six foot four. He could be an absolute stud. The next round comes up. I got Raheem Mostert goes right in front of me. I got Terrace Marshall. Um, am I taking Raheem Mostert needing a running back over Terrence Marshall? Hell no. Well, I like the value Terrence bath Marshall. that you'd be taking there. Exactly. I'm not going to give it up. I, I, I will take a chance on needing a run. I, I need a running back in this spot when I took Pittman. Next round, I've already taken Pittman as my fifth wide receiver. Right. I need a wide. I need a running back, but I like Terrace Marshall over the running back choices. So I take Terrace Marshall. I still need a running back, and I, this is again when we get done with this draft, and you see my team is not my favorite team, but I don't regret those picks there. Maybe I, it, now if I had it all over to do again, I might take a different wide receiver or dip, you know somebody else that I like. But I'm I, I'm not going to force those. Yeah, you know that dead well, zone, dry zone, whatever you want to call it. I'm not going to force those. Well, that being it's said. Dry. Melvin Gordon at eight five looks awful tasty. Yeah, it does. I was going through that and saying like, oh yeah, and then I saw Melvin. And I was like, actually, I do kind of like that. Melvin, um, I like that. So there are some exceptions to the rule, and I, you know, I like taking the James Robinson and, and the Ronald Jones. But then, you know, if you if you wait until you know maybe nine ten, and then you could you could start stabbing on maybe a Connor, a Moss, a Gainwell, Gus Edwards, uh, Daryl Henderson, Hines, Devin Henderson. Singletary. Like no matter what, give me all those dudes, Daryl Henderson. On and and now you know, if I if I would have just stayed. In, if I would have stayed out of the dry zone drafting running backs and did like, you know, you did right here, big co. And you just went, let's just call it fourth round where you could have taken Chris Carson and you took Godwin and said, of course you do. Um, of course. And then you just went Higgins, Debo, Pittman, Marshall, like you just said. And now, now if you wanted to, you took Ter you took uh T law, but if you didn't want to take Gallup there, you could have, you know, you could have hammered Henderson's. You could have hammered the game. Wells. You could have hammered a bunch of other running backs. And yeah, are you maybe losing somewhat of the value battle? Cause there are still some good receivers down there. This is, you know, I'm, I'm I do like, a, but now it's starting to kind of balance out a little bit. I don't feel bad. And I've already got five wide receivers. I've already got four wide receivers. I've already got six wide receivers. So now I can stab on all these green boxes, uh, the running backs and, you know, so, you know, I, I think we got to do you want to take Trey Sermon? You're being forced into taking Trey Sermon and Michael Carter in the fourth and fifth round. Like I can't. It's not that I don't like Michael Carter. It's not that I don't like Trey Sermon. I love Trey Sermon. I think he's great. But like the Niners, who the fuck knows? There's injury concern with Trey Sermon. And there's how who are they going to use? Like they haven't shown me that they're going to use one guy if everybody's healthy. 
It's just, I, and it's just, it's too, I can't base that on the fifth round pick. Now, if you were just like the Niners or any other team and then he would be the one a, and there would just be a one B and we'd be good. Then sure. Trace Herman all day in the fifth round, but like it's too fucking dicey to be like in the fifth round, Michael Carter. I love what the jets are doing. I fucking love Joe Douglas. I love that they're building them trenches. I think I love that, that LaFleur is over there and they've been under Shanahan and that they're probably run game is going to be kind of similar. I think Michael Carter's great, but I can't take him in the fourth round. Yeah, I get Sorry. it. I get no, I get it. I, well, I'm looking at it like even still, like you said, I mean, I could have taken these, you know, I could have hammered this guy if I didn't want to take a gallop. Like, obviously, and I'm not Gallup, hating on the gallop pick, that wasn't the point of the conversation. No, 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 I love no, taking gallop, great value I, again. State, you know, if 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 everything goes right, Henderson's backing up acres. If acres goes down, Henderson could crush, sure. Gallup probably not going to be in my starting lineup without an injury to more of my starting lineup where he's forced in there or Tony Pollard think, in the 10th round. If there's an injury, I love that. Um, Got to do that. He was before your Gallup pick, but of you could take him uh, in lieu of Lance. Yeah. Well, Tony or Pollard, Trevor Lawrence, I mean, Tony Pollard. Yeah. Um, probably not a bad idea. I probably could have done that for sure. Um, but I'm looking at it like I got, I got lamb and Godwin in my two wide receiver spots, Higgins and Samuel in my two flex spots potentially. And then I looked at it like Pittman and Marshall just on my bench, Mm -hmm. you know? And then if I go down the list, I'm still looking for play. I'm like, I don't want to get stabbing on those running backs that are, that would need a, to catch a break, you know, is if, I mean, got Gus Edwards could tip, could be Mm. startable. Juicy. you know, Dobbins could be out there crushing it and Gus Edwards still startable. He could be an RB2 would got would, you know, Dobbins killing it. Um, but you know, the single Terry's and the nine Hines and the Kenyon Drakes of the world, like I really don't know. I I think I'd still rather put if I could see a, a path for if I could see the wide receiver quality like Gallup. If I could see, I didn't end up taking any more wide receivers um, because this was uh, until later, you know, for the next couple picks, no more wide receivers. I put an Alexander Madison on my team later on, but like a a Gallup or a Landry, I'll put a Landry on my team. Somebody can be in my starting lineup every week if I need him to be, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm I'm still looking for if I if I feel like this guy's too good to pass up just because I need to force a force a running back, you know take my stabs later. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying like, instead of doing that earlier, like, and you could just skip it. And then, you know, now it feels, doesn't feel as bad. You're not taking as big of a right. bath and value. Exactly. To be able to stab on those. Yeah. Do I want Jarvis Landry on my team? Absolutely. He's a great value right now. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I probably would be pretty hard pressed to not put him on my team. He's on my team. Like, you know, I <laughs> yeah. took, <laughs> that was but I, I also needed, I also needed receivers at that point because I did take a bunch of running backs. Um, and I, you know, which has always been our thing is like, Hey, you know, you can wait and there's going to be good receivers that you could take, you know, the Marvin Joneses of the world and the Jarvis Landry's of the world now. And, you know, uh, the gallops who could be good. And now, you know, I think Nelson Aguilar will be just fine. And we're, we're always big fans of a Crowder type players and all those guys who could be just great twos on your team and just get as many running back stabs as you can. But now the way this boards break, every board, every year changes and how you should draft. It always is ever changing. And just, there just seems to be this super dry zone of running backs. Now, all of a sudden where there isn't even intermittent ones where I feel that great about stabbing. So well, I'm just saying like, just, you could just hammer wide receivers and tight ends through a big chunk of rounds and, and feel like you're getting the better value and then kind of shift back gears of like, all right, maybe I'm not quite winning the value battle with the receiver running back here, but I can, I feel a lot better about stabbing on a bunch of running backs. Well, I'll make this, I know we got to get out of here. Yeah. I'll make this, um, I'll make this a little quick since we kind of got into it. Obviously if you've been listening to us for a couple of years, I have been one of those guys. That, yeah. Like give me all the shots at running backs and I can figure out why receivers later. And that's not really changed. Cause I still can figure you could, I could start drafting wide receivers in the eighth round and put together some mighty good wide receiver lineups is I, I have run a, a, you know, a hefty money league in FFPC this year. And I looked, I checked this board a minute ago and none of my wide receivers were drafted before the sixth round in this league, in this start in this mock rip draft right here, going into this year in this mock draft. And I just won the trap, the championship with receivers six round or later last year in FFPC. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, it still can be done. It, I'm just, like you said, every year is different. I mentioned earlier about McVeigh. Hopefully, you assume he gets a little better every year. 
my thing going into this year's startups is I want to come out of the startups with the with the highest value, highest equity set of players I can. And if I'm a little dry running back, I my skill set is the trade market. And if I have to be dry at RB2, I don't want to be, but if I end up drafting a team that's dry at RB2 through the first couple of weeks of the season while I wait on another team to figure out that he's 0-4 when he had high hopes and I got to go pluck a running back off of his team, or, you know, I was full of, um, you know, Tony Pollard's and Alexander Madison's later on in the draft and somebody gets hurt, all of a sudden I got an RB1 that was supposed to be a bench player. You know, I'm not saying that I'm going into every draft looking to play – you know, zero running back because that's not how I want to play it. That team that won the championship, you know, stud running backs. I want to have stud running backs. I'm just not going to pay for guys that I want to be studs, and I yeah. hope they're studs. If there are studs, I'm taking them. If they should be studs but things hadn't worked out or I want them to be studs or they could be studs, if I know there's a wide receiver stud, I'm taking a wide receiver stud. Just like you said, the Chris Godwin pick. I'm taking Chris Godwin before Kareem Hunt. I love Kareem Hunt. I'm taking Chris Godwin over Kareem Hunt all day long because Kareem Hunt has Nick Chubb in his way without an injury. He's probably not going to be averaging 16 points a game. Chris Godwin. Hey, that's what he's eat. done like this whole like forever. I mean, Kareem Hunt did not average 16 points pretty a much game last year. Go for 15 points from Kareem Hunt. He but I'm average, with you. He did I'm not average you. that last year. He didn't even average that. He did. He did not average that last year. He was. You got the stats. But my point was, you can bring them look up. them up. I, I guarantee he didn't average that last year. Chris Godwin with Tom Brady has a chance to average twenty points a week this year. There's no chance I'm taking a what running back over Chris Godwin if he's not an absolute stud. Well, there's no chance I'm taking yeah. Ceedee Lamb over Travis Etienne either. Well, but hey, hey, wow, 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 wow! I'm wow. with you on the Kareem Hunt. I'm with you. I, I, I we want to do least if, favorite picks. If you would just let the host host here, I want you to table this discussion. Well, I want to bring back some of this and 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 get back into it when we get into that last year running backs. I want to talk a little bit more about that CD Lamb pick that you made and and kind of where he fits in. But that's what we're going to be doing when we do the oh, Aaron Jones, Joe Jay Mixon, Wayne, Jay Travis Etienne. So he feels attacked. Yeah. No, no, I'm with you. I agree. I didn't on even that notice one. you took Cream Hunt. I, I didn't even know you took Cream Hunt. I if didn't anybody would ever ask me, I, I didn't even get to talk about Cream Hunt. You we, just went right. We, back well, I'm, I was going to give you last word and let you talk about oh, your team okay, last. Okay, if okay. you would let the host host Jesus Christ uh -huh. here, uh -huh. I had it all mapped out. <laughs> get the reins, get son the of a bit. Then Jay Wayne had to attack him about CD Lamb and ETN. Well, I got had it all chalked up for a nice teaser to subscribe because we're going to talk about that. Write it in. Subscribe because right we're going to talk about that. And Jay Wayne, get the last word in on how you drafted your team, who you drafted, and what you did there. Hold on, go go to Big Co because I, I want to find this Kareem Hunt average because I think he was closer to 15 points than, than Big Co. Just pulling some random stats out of the air with no no backup. You, but no, uh, Kareem Hunt's on my team, Bo. I know what he did last Kareem year because he's my on team my team. Too. Well, then you should know that he didn't average 15 Dude, points a game. You, I can tell you he's good for a start every single week. You should have just let me Google this. I could have been done with this already. Yeah, what are you, you're you pretty good with computers. What the hell's going on over there? All right. So what, attacked anything there. else? Anything else you guys got yeah, on this? Did the here? attacking and you're losing. And, I, and I've, you know, again, I don't want to have 13.7 points a game. Almost 15. 15. Round up to 15. Pro it could. It was probably just about as many as Chris Godwin averaged. So. Which I, I should have taken Chris Godwin. I'm with you there, Big Co. I should have taken Chris Godwin over Kareem Hunt, but it's so dry. I took the last decent running back because I took a wide receiver with my first overall pick, and I should have taken a running back. If I had taken a running back, I could have easily passed on Kareem Hunt and taken Chris Godwin. I probably should have still just taken Chris Godwin over Kareem Hunt, but I was like, if I take Kareem Hunt here, then I can, I can just stab on the best value available for the rest of this draft and – I don't have to pigeon. I don't have to search for another third running back. Um, I probably should have taken Chris Godwin instead of Kareem Hunt, regardless of what I do with my first pick. But because I took a wide receiver with one of those first three picks, I felt pigeonholed to taking. That's Kareem all Hunt. I was trying to say. That's all. I'm not going to feel pigeonholed on any. I'm, I'm not pigeonholing myself in any spot. And you're right. I shouldn't have taken Trevor Lawrence. I should have taken Tony Pollard. And we, you, this is why you mock it up before you fuck it up. Got to keep exactly mocking. why. You, this is why you mock it up before you fuck it up. And I wanted to circle back around. You talked a little bit about Gaskins. We talked about, you know, uh, Chase Edmonds 
I was all for trading for those guys last in season. And I still love the idea of trading for those guys. I still think they're going to be very good PPR players and great assets for your team here. I just don't want to take them where they're being taken right now. Like I, I, see, tra- I could trade miles. Casey right now. literally made a video mid season last year and told you what was going to happen. He to- literally told you that, what the way the Cardinals were working out, they weren't going to have the money to pay anybody else. And Chase Edmonds was going to be the top dog there. He literally told you it was going to happen. Now they did get Connor, who I think is really good and can perennially get shit on. So if you're going to give me Connor in the ninth round, I'll take it. It's a one year deal. So he could go somewhere <laughs> else again next year. But same thing with miles Gaskin. We put out a video about to, to, should you, should you just hold miles Gaskin? And we were like, yeah, you should probably just hold miles Gaskin. But that now worked out for you. Now, now at this point, I, I tweeted the other day, like it, it is a guy like Miles Gaskin, who's in our mocks. He's got seven, three here, but he's been in the sixth. I've even seen him sometimes at the end of the fifth. Uh, but that's that's kind of the, where he lives. And it's like, I think he kind of is one of those guys where in startups, he's going in those pl- places. I don't think his actual value to other people in, in leagues is actually there. So I was like, should you sell him? And I'm like, well. You know, no, it's it's, but I don't think the value is actually real. Like that's kind of what I was exactly. trying to get at. And somebody yep. did sell they sold them for a 2023 first. And I was like, Hey, you know, that's down the road, but that's, that's a pretty good move. And he was in a, then I had him describe his team and he was in a rebuilding mode. Uh, so I think that was a good move for him. Um, Gotta cause he, what he, you can get. he was ready to go, but you know, I, I got a hard asking here. Seven, three. Seven three, where you which I don't think is the worst value. It's not the worst value, but it's crazy for Miles Gaskin. And the dude had three wide receivers. He that's the guy that had Jamar uh, um, Taylor, Kelsey, Aaron Jones start, and then he took Chris Carson. He's in no need to necessarily force a running back, and he forced Travis. It forced Gaskins, and um, he I was unnecessary, and I I was that's why I wanted to look for him. I was expecting the guy to have maybe one running back, potentially two, definitely not two out of the first three picks, you know. Um, and Carson. Yeah. So you're set. Once you, if you, if you're taking Carson that high and he's your third running back, you're, the, you can't yeah. be taking Miles Gaskin. You had, you could have, you could have, he could have grabbed Adam Thielen, Bateman, Rashad Moore, Pittman, Goddard, any of those dudes. Exactly. I, I was taking Adam Thielen right here where I took Ronald Jones at seven, nine. I was going to be stoked to add that veteran presence to my but fucking you, squad right there. What he you got said about up right in front of me. The value, what you said, like the value is not real. Like the, that's the absolute case of startup versus existing league trades. Like in a startup, Miles Gaskin was sitting there, running backs looked dry. He, he nabbed him in an existing league. Everybody's got who they got. And it's like, well, will you give me, I'll give you Miles Gaskin for this guy. No. I'll give you Miles Gaskin for this guy. No, I'll give you Miles Gaskin. You give me a first round pick next year for Miles Gaskin. No way. But yeah, I, like I, you're not I, trading I Rondell Moore for for. I can't Gaskin. guarantee you this, but it's seven three in the startup draft. It's seven three. That's right in that zone of their last chance to get a, get first, a first round, round pick, pick next year. Bingo. Instead of taking Miles Gaskin there, you trade as far back as it has if you, as you has to. Have it's to, a mock and you can't to, to get it for obviously. But that's that's your spot right there. You like I gotta take Miles Gaskin here. You need to start trades, offering trades and get you a first round pick next year. All right. But I Jay Wayne, I do really want to give you the last word. What else? What do you got? Anything? Uh, let's see. A couple more notes. Love the Chase Claypool pick, man. I gotta get Chase Claypool in my <laughs> Uh, this man went I, to his team. <laughs> I went straight. Yeah, last spot. notes on my team. <laughs> yeah, I took Rondell Moore seven seven. I love that, and that's the reason why I didn't take Terrace Marshall with my eighth round pick. I took Curtis Samuel instead. I didn't want to double down on two rookies right there. I feel like just taking. Although one of them is going to hit. Uh, that and and then if I had to take it back, I, I could get rid of Robert Tanyan and and grab Daryl Henderson because I feel like you really need to get Daryl Henderson on your team no matter what you did early in the draft. You just need to get some Daryl Henderson because he's being uh, just overlooked, just forgotten about because Cam Akers is the God. And if you look at what Daryl Henderson did last year, it was arguably better than what Cam Akers did. Will you save it? Will you save it? All right. No one's listening to this. Save it. Anyway, we're hour and a half into this motherfucker. Appreciate y'all. <laughs> Got all sorts of things to talk about with Cam Akers. Daryl Henderson's going to be a big part of it. So let's go. I got nothing else. You guys ready? Anything else? Good to go. All right. Peanut butter and jelly. Who cares? <laughs> Just don't Who put cares? peanut butter and jelly on the same slice of bread. That's what we learned. That's what we really learned today. 
Appreciate you guys for sticking with us. Let me get a five-star review if you're listening on iTunes. Definitely hit that subscription button if you're still listening on YouTube. Love you guys, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Later.